um, meeting. Thank you all for being here. And uh, so from President Henry, it looks like we don't have any attendees in the meeting yet. So we yeah. might just- So I was gonna see if there was any- There we two. go. Are there There's some coming in now? Okay. Would you like me to call the roll? Uh, yeah, please do that. President Henry? Here. Director Moran? Present. Director Falls? Here. Director Ferris? Present. Thank you. So uh, we've got, let's see, we've got five people, five members of the public. So at this time, I'm going to ask if any of you want to make a comment about something that is not on the agenda, uh, you may have five minutes to speak. You only get to speak one time at this point. And then when we get to the agenda, you get to talk again, but only one time. Last meeting, we did things a little differently because it was kind of a very different meeting. But normally, uh, during the meeting, you only get to talk once on each item on the agenda. So I'm going to try to make sure that we don't say, oh, okay, go ahead. Um, but I might if it gets down to it. So, all right. Any comments from the people in the public, from the public? Can you put your hand up or? No comments from the public now? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, Mr. Rogers, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, Staff has none. None, okay. So unfinished business, the first item is the CZU wildfire damage assessment report. And I'll turn that over to you, Rick Rogers, to talk about it. Thank you, Chair Henry. Yes, uh, the Director of Operations for Tato, uh, James Furtado, will present this uh, damage assessment report, the current damage assessment report for the wildfire. James? Yeah, so as you see, this is the weekly report from Sandus on the fire damage and repair and replacement. Uh, things are moving along pretty smoothly. Uh, we're trying to wind down the projects at this time as we're trying to onboard an engineering manager. Um, right now we're trying to finish up the foreman line and the five mile line that goes to the pressure break box at the foreman diversion. Um, that trail, it's coming along pretty good. We're about halfway through with the eight inch pipe that's going in now. Uh, the 12 inch pipe coming down for the foreman intake to the lion treatment plant is complete and has been flushed. And we are just waiting on a fitting to be able to start running water through our treatment plant and start filling the lion tank, getting ready for VOC testing of that tank. Um, the big steel piping all between the uh, lion tank, little lion tank and big steel reservoir and the big steel booster is in place. Um, it's all been disinfected and cleared to go online. We are using it to now pump up to the temporary tanks that are at the little lion site. 
We cannot use it to pump up to the big Lion tank yet. We are waiting on a check valve there. And once we get that check valve installed, we'll be able to pump water up to the big steel booster as well to help fill that 3 million gallon tank. Uh, we will be filling that tank in stages and pulling samples in stages. That way, if we do end up with VOC contamination, we don't have to dump the whole 3 million gallons. We're gonna start pour a quarter tank and take a sample. And if we have VOC hits at that time, that's when we'll pull out. Um, we'll drain the tank and we'll go into putting specs together for recoating of that tank. Um, other than that, we are, like I said, we're close to wrapping up the temporary and the emergency work. And then we will be going into the big projects, which will be the F work for FEMA. And that all will have to go to design and then be bid out for construction. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm here to answer. Okay, thank you, James. Uh, any questions from the board? If I could just quick, quickly add that one of the first items the board will be seeing is an assessment of types of material and discussion on replacement of uh, the, the raw water supply lines. I know the board is uh, very anxious to discuss different types of construction methods and materials. That will be one of the first uh, studies that we'll bring to the board. Thank you. Uh, Director Fultz, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, James, just uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, just a couple of questions. I thought at one point in time, we were pretty sure that the um, uh, the tanks needed coating um, before being refilled. Are we... Yeah. Confident now that the we didn't get any uh, VOC contamination, or are we doing this as a precaution? I, I don't. I'm not sure. I understand why we why we didn't move forward with with COVID. So, so the little lion tank, yes, has been confirmed that it was VOC. We never filled that tank. Um, that one has confirmed. We uh, approved the spec and we're putting an RFP together right now to get that tank coated inside. The bigger Lion Tank did not get as much damage and it was pressure washed and cleaned with scaffolding and everything in there. And that tank seemed to have come out pretty clean. So now we have to be able to get water into it and do a stagnation time in order to see if there's actual VOCs contamination in that tank. And then, so we have to prove that there's VOCs before we can go and get a spec together to be able to recoat that tank. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, one other question. Um, ultimately, how many trees did we take down around uh, our um, lion facility? And, and are we done with taking trees down? So in the lion and big steel facility, we roughly took out 400 to 450 trees. Um, right now, PG&E is going through and marking trees and taking trees out on their end. So we're kind of holding off on marking any more trees on our side. Uh, we have had our certified arborist up there. And at this time we have no trees marked to come out. Does he that, think we, we do have access roads and other places on the watershed that Carly is working with one of our consultants at this time to go through and identify any trees that need to be removed. And we have um, tree cutters and tree contractors that have reached out and we're working with them to have them do the work as needed on any other trees that need to be removed. So, I mean, bottom line is we do expect there's gonna to need to be a, a, lot, a lot, sounds like a potentially a lot more trees to come out uh, in order to get back to a safe um, situation. Yeah, at that site, I think we're pretty close to done, uh, but watershed wide, no, we're not. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Any other board member have, a, okay, uh, Director Moran. 
Yeah. Uh, so maybe James or Carly, how are the trees being removed? So here's my example that I have is there was a hillside across from where I live that was uh, thinned out a few years ago. And uh, to remove those trees, they had to uh, take them up on a hoist and avoid dragging them over the landscape. So I don't know if we're dealing with hillsides like that, but how are the trees being removed to avoid any environmental damage? Well, at the big steel on Lion site, that was very fire damaged and all the ground there was pretty tore up and burned out as it was. And with the removal of the damaged pipes and facilities and everything, there was a lot of equipment that went in there and everything. So at that site, we removed them with uh, log skidding. And that site's all been cleaned up. Erosion control has been put in place. Pipelines are in place. It's all buttoned up. Now for the rest of the watershed on the roads and things like that, we're not going to be going far from the roads. And so they'll either be grappled from the road and brought out or there's also a lot of them will be laid and left in place and then limbed up. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions from a member of the board? Seeing none, I will go to the public at this time if you have any questions. So Beth Thomas, you have your hand up. Thank you. Um, I, I had a couple of questions about this. The tree removal that's to be evaluated and done on the road areas, uh, is what's the criteria for that? Does it have to do with fire damage or does it have to do with another aspect of the use of the roads? And um, is, Car I don't, you know, James and Carly, probably both of you have information about this, but what is the criteria being used uh, for the damage that, that will be done by the removal of the trees? So one of the big things that he's, the arborist is looking at is fire damage to the trees. No trees that don't have fire damage will be removed. One of the big things is the fire damaged trees that are on the outboard edge of the roads are deemed to be cause big problems if they end up falling and uprooting into the roadway and taking out the whole roadway. So the whole thing is to mitigate the road not being damaged and drop those trees now that have the potential of falling and tearing up the road and fall them now so that the root ball stays where it's at and still has the structure of keeping the road in place. Um, but like I said, no tree, any tree that is severely damaged by fire will be the only trees that would be removed. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other members of the public who have a question? Um, seeing Let's see, there's one phone call, listener. Uh, do you, phone call person, do you have a, a question? Don't see any, so I'm, I'm gonna move on to the next item on the agenda of unfinished business. Item B, uh, conjunctive use plan for CEQA and the environmental um, permits. So, Mr. Rogers, I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. Yes, item 4B is our conjunctive use plan, CEQA and environmental permitting uh, consultant uh, selection, and we have our environmental planner, uh, Carly, uh, Blanchard here to present this item to the board. Okay, thank you, Rick. So in 2017, we received a grant through the Wildlife Conservation Board to develop a conjunctive use plan. 
The conjunctive use plan will identify options for increasing stream base flow for fish and increased reliability of surface and groundwater supplies for the district through conjunctive management of its water supplies. The plan is being written in two parts. Part one addresses proposed near-term conjunctive use related changes in district operations, such as use of the emergency intertie and non-emergency water transfers. Um, part two of the plan is a longer term planning component that considers potential development of additional water source, such as the existing allotment of the Loch Lomond Reservoir that the district has. Um, similar to the plan, the conjunct or the sequel analysis will also be done in two parts. Uh, part one will be completed as a project level CEQA analysis and part two will undergo a programmatic level or planning level decision um, CEQA analysis. The conjunctive use plan at this point is 90% complete and pending the direction of the associated environmental permitting and also some water rights. In November 2020, the district released a request for proposals to select a consultant to complete the initial study and CEQA documentation required to implement the conjunctive use plan. The district received three proposals, one from Rincon Consultants, EMC Planning, and Denise Duffy and Associates. The county district staff and the district's consulting fisheries ecologists reviewed and scored each proposal. Rincon Consultants was received the highest score and is being recommended as the consultant to complete the conjunctive use plan, CEQA, and environmental permitting. This portion of the project will be fully supported and funded by the Wildlife Conservation Board grant received, and the cost is approximately $77,000, all funded by that grant. It is recommended that the Board of Directors review the memo and authorize the district manager to enter into a professional service agreement with RINCON consultants for the conjunctive use plan, CEQA, and environmental permitting. Um, I'm prepared to answer any questions that the Board of Public may have. Any member, any uh, board members, do you have questions? Uh, Director Fultz. Thank you. Um, Charlie, thanks very much for that overview. I had a, a few questions about this. Just to make sure that I'm uh, understanding this correctly, one of the elements um, that would come out of this analysis would be the uh, potential ability for uh, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District to manage its water sources as a unified whole uh, and be able to use the water as appropriate wherever we wanted to inside of the entire system. Right, that's about right. So really that portion comes down to the emergency inner ties and being able to use those in non-emergencies. And then as well as, you know, taking advantage of the allotment we have at Loch Lomond and being able to use that within our system. So it's just giving us more options to move water around and also take advantage of some other sources that we do have. And then potentially use excess flows to either move to other portions of the district or even potentially to sell to Scotts Valley. Right, it, it basically allows us to manage water sources as we would within any other kind of resource that we have without any restrictions at that point, right. um, except potentially for one, <clears throat> which I'll get to in a minute. Um, in terms of the water resources though, the immediate resources that could be used would come out of Fall Creek um, and the Kirby plant the Loch Lomond water would need a significantly higher treatment in order for it to be used. Uh, and of course, interconnected into our system, correct? Right, I think, you know, we should consider the Loch Lomond kind of a more future project. It's just our treatment plant at this point doesn't have the capacity right. to treat that water. Um, right. So that's a big, that'll be a large cost as well. Um, okay. But that is, that is being considered and that'll be kind of reviewed and analyzed in the CEQA analysis. The Santa Cruz Water Department has been, um, I believe the word is perfecting their water rights um, in our area. Um, one of the impacts of this entire water situation are the flow requirements in Fall Creek as well as downstream from Fall Creek. Um, I think everybody I've talked to in the county and even at Santa Cruz Water and ourselves have indicated to me that the requirements, no one really knows how they were set and they seem to be extreme requirements. That is not necessarily ones that um, 
would be reasonable and in many cases we're simply not able to meet them at certain times of the year thereby violating our water permit uh, frequently uh, and sometimes every year um, is this process going to address that and are we working with the santa cruz water department to clean all of this up they get their water rights perfected we get some uh, relief uh, on our water permit and uh, and without impacting the environment in any way. Right. So part of this grant does have a budget for water rights. So we are working with our water rights attorney right now to figure out that portion. Um, the analysis will also consider that, but we'll have to work to get the information from our attorney first, and then we'll we'll be able to bring that into this analysis as well. Okay, but but there are funds available to. There are. Right. And um, who was, uh, who were the, um, in terms of the bidders, I assume they all put in uh, bid numbers. It was a sealed bid and, and that. Um, who was the low cost bid? The lowest cost was actually Rincon and, um, and EMC, I think were both very close to each other. I think within $5,000. And so in this and case, the, the, the one that was the lowest cost in your opinion, also has the best capability and presented the best proposal. Right. Uh, that's always, it's a happy occasion when that, <laughs> when that occurs for sure. Great, thank you very much for your work on You're it. Welcome. This is unbelievably strategic to the district. It is one of the key things that will allow us, I think, to unlock a lot of potential that we have inside of our district. And so getting this done as rapidly as possible is really, really important. So thanks very much for working on that. To, to part of this, part of Director the Director um, Graham, or did you want to say something, Rick? Yeah, just real quick, part part of this uh, um, conjunctive use, will uh, we're moving towards to allow the district to possibly take more water in the winter time and then bring back some of that water for streams, fisheries, there there is a fishery element uh, to these uh, to these proposals, uh, and it, it's got a very doable potential to where we should be able to use more water on the off peak times and the off uh, critical times for steelhead and and fish rearing, but then bring it back in the summertime. Uh, win win for everybody. It sounds yeah, like it's it. a win win, and it, yeah. it, it it and there is a, a an element to improve. Uh, water and streams for fisheries. Perfect. Uh, that's really important. Love it. Okay, uh, Rick Moran, you. Yes, uh, th this probably is for Carly. So Carly, I'm trying to understand this grant process. So um, you're going to have a, some work in this, uh, working out the details of this as well. You, your time is involved. Do they, does that grant include your time? It did initially, um, but unfortunately, we we ended up going outside of some of the budget. So we're actually we claimed some of the staff time in the beginning, um, but for the future, for the next few months and the end of this this grant, we won't be claiming our staff time, um, just so we can keep the money enough for our consultants to finish their work. All right, and one other question, kind of a silly question, but when we fought this CZU fire, there were helicopters taking water out of Loch Lomond constantly do you think we used our finally we used our allotment from the <laughs> Loch Lomond to uh help the San Lorenzo Valley Water District there yeah it wouldn't I don't think it would count towards no. our water right but but I guess it it could potentially be considered <laughs> that it was part of our water um, just okay. as much thank, as thank you. So that's gallows humor uh any other board member have anything to say Okay, uh, I will go to the public for comments. If anybody has a comment. Mm, seeing none, we, we do have, oh, okay, Beth Thomas. Beth? Hi, sorry, my, I couldn't unmute. Um, I had a quick question that I believe is maybe related to this from a meeting quite a while ago. <laughs> um, and it was talking about the former 
health and water, uh, the contract that we have with them and, and the issue of uh, language in their contract that prevents water from being moved out. And I'm curious as to how that impacts this and what we plan to do about it. Right, so part of that, the grant funding that's working on the water rights will be addressing that. Um, so our water rights attorney is looking into that right now and working with our fisheries biologists and everyone else that's involved with the project. So hopefully we'll have something to report back to the board um, once we go a little further into the water right analysis portion of the grant. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else in the public who wishes to speak? Okay, we have one person on the phone. Um, you don't, I, okay. All right. Um, so, Carly, um, what we need to do here is authorize our district manager to en enter into a surface agreement service, not surface, <laughs> sorry, uh, with RINCON. So we need somebody to make a motion to that effect. So any, oh, okay, uh, Rick Moran. So as I'm reading this here, um, I'll make a motion that we uh, authorize the district manager to enter into a professional service agreement with RINCON Consultants, Inc for the conjunctive use plan, CEQA, and environmental permitting. I'll second that. Okay, Bob seconded. Okay, we have a motion and a second, so Holly. Uh, and Lois, I have one quick question. Okay. Um, is Gina Nichols our uh, water rights attorney as well? No. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So, uh, Holly, you want to call the question here? Yes, please. Uh, President Henry? Yes. Rick Moran? Yes. Bob Fultz? Yes. Lou Ferris? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we're going to move on here to new business, uh, and that is uh, item A under new biz business, which is installation of water service line, um, a water service, and that's for the Markley property. So, uh, Rick Rogers, do you want to comment? Yeah, on uh, Item 5A is a long service land agreement for APN 089-431-28. Uh, it's a long service land agreement with uh, Kimberly and Steve Mark Markley. Uh, this is a parcel uh, located up off of the Ralston Ridge area off of Bear Creek Road. Uh, earlier in this year, uh, the board approved a very similar long service land agreement uh, for uh, APN very close to this, actually one of their neighbors. Uh, the Markleys came in and also expressed uh, uh, interest in connecting to the district. Staff review indicates that the district has no water distribution facilities at the location of the Markleys home and with no plans uh, for them to be extended up into those areas. Um, and staff recommends that uh, the district enter into a long service line agreement, uh, which requires the Markleys, or a long service line agreement requires uh, uh, to install cross connection control, uh, obtain an easement crossing the parcel, um, a legal uh, e easement uh, recorded to the property. Um, and with that, uh, this is, uh, the district has several of these, many of these long service line agreements uh, and approved several uh, each year. Um, the uh, Ralston Ridge area, uh, there, there is a meter bank for several homes in that same neighborhood, all fed by a six inch main. Um, and so it is recommended uh, 
that uh, the board approve uh, the long service land agreement. And I'll answer questions. Okay, any questions from the board? Director Fultz. Yes, thank, thanks, Rick. This may be a question for Gina rather than you, since it has mm -hmm. to do with uh, the contract language itself. You know, with these contracts, it's really important. Anytime we're doing business with our community, it's really important to me that we that we're pretty clear and and fair. Um, and there is a term in here I wasn't sure I understood. It's in section two, in the second paragraph. It uh, talks about the term of the agreement shall be from the date this agreement is made and entered into until all covenants of this agreement are completed and accepted by the district. What covenants are those that need to be fulfilled um, in order for the agreement to be met? Okay, well, um, so this is, this is Gina and uh, I, and I'll be honest, I did not write this disagreement. Um, I knew but that. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the plain language of the agreements says until all covenants are completed. So I, I would consider that to include everything under um, district's obligations and applicants' obligations. Um, well, hmm. so I think the thing that confuses me is that this also appears to have a maximum time of eight years on it for the agreement to be effective. So it basically contemplates the applicant doing everything within five years, which means that somehow they would have to fulfill all of their covenants, whatever those covenants are within five years. And then there's an extension period that is not to exceed three years. So the maximum time this can be in effect would be eight years as written. I, I'm not, this is why I'm, I'm confused by this because there are some clauses in here that make it sound like they're intended to be in perpetuity or at least longer than eight years. And I, 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 I it, I'm a little confused here because it seems like we have a conflict between the plain language of the term, which would be a maximum of eight years. And only if we extend it in writing, we could certainly refuse to do so. Uh, and it would end at the end of five years. Um, and some of the clauses that are further back in the agreement, how, how do we resolve that potential conflict? Well, I guess I could say, you know, I don't see that issue as, um, necessarily fatal to the extent that the district believes that these um, obligations would be expected to be completed in the designated amount of time and also um, uh, you know at some point it may be acceptable for the district to be treated essentially like any other customer of the district and so it may not be significant that you know, there's a limitation on the effectiveness of this. Um, but I think you raise good points. And um, I, I mean, the, this agreement could easily be adjusted to, I mean, it's written, it's written in a way that it looks like it's intended to be recorded and to run with the land, even though it doesn't say that expressly. So, you know, it could easily be an agreement intended to run with the land in perpetuity. Um, but it's that, not written that way. Yeah, it's, it, right. It's, it's, it's certainly not that you're right. You're right. It's, that's not the way it's written right now. Well, Rick wants to say something. Can we let him say something sure. about this and see what? Well, just, I just have one comment, uh, Rick, before you start. I mean, it's very important that the district add customers when it can. Um, so we definitely want to do that, but we want to make sure we're doing it in a way that there isn't confusing to our customers. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I can kind of tell you what the intent is about the expiration and so forth. A lot of these parcels are difficult parcels to build on and take a considerable amount of permitting time with the County of Santa Cruz. And one of the first requirements they need to do with the County is show uh, a well-served letter, a proof of water service. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what the, that gate is. And sometimes that they can't get a building permit within that time frame, we will give an extension. But the district doesn't like having these agreements out there. Uh, they get, you know, they get lost as time goes on, and then someone will come in and want service. And maybe 10 years, 20 years down the road from now, we may not be able to supply service in that area. Or there may be, you know, so we do like them to have a sunset until they're installed. And, you know, then once they're installed, we supply water in perpetuity, so to speak. Okay, so um, I, I understand that, Rick. I you know, know enough about the development process in Santa yeah. Cruz County being um, so easy to do uh, that uh, it, it sometimes can take years. Um, and we certainly, it, it almost seems to me like this agreement has two parts. The first part is some level of sunset around your ability to get installed. And the second part is a um, sort of a easement or an easement restriction that would be recorded against the property in perpetuity. For example, um, things like sections 11, 12, um, and I think there's also a not participate in the leak adjustment in here somewhere, um, six. And, and so that is, um, that, that's sort of, that, that's where I see this, this conflict. It, it's just, it's not working well the way that it is. Uh, and, and given that this agreement was written by us, not by the customer, if there is an ambiguity, typically, you know, if there's a dispute, it's it's going to go against the writer of the agreement, not. Uh, so, I, I guess what I'm looking for here is, you know, we this had come up before, I think, in terms of um, addressing some of the conflicts that we see. Um, I'd, I'd like to really take an action item to get this cleaned up. Um, I do think we want to do more of these, and hopefully, many more of these because we need more customers. Um, but I, I'd like to get that ambiguity cleared up so that um, the things that we want to have there in perpetuity or that we think are reasonable to have in perpetuity are, and the things that are really need to be limited relative to your right to develop are clearly spelled out as well. Is that something that we could do for the next round of these? Yes, I, oh, I, I believe so, and I'll, I'll refer to council. Is this a heavy lift that would need to go to committee or is something, Gina, that you think that you and I could uh, relatively quickly turn it around and get it back to the, to the full board uh, before the next uh, long service line customer uh, comes in? Yeah, I think this could be turned around pretty quickly. It would help um, if there are other comments on the form to kind of air them. I, I just I just have one other comment and that's proposing an amendment to this agreement, which would strike section 11 um, from the agreement. I, I'm uncomfortable with the notion of, particularly around development of activities of stripping people of their rights to participate in a process that might lead to financial impacts to themselves further down the road. Um, I understand the, um, uh, the, the reason for why the district may have put this in, but it strikes me a lot as sort of what the county had instituted about 30 years ago, where if you wanted a significant building permit, you were required to give them an easement across your property for a trail system that they wanted to put in place. It, it's sort of a, um, it, it's not a good look for the district, I, I don't think, to be the, the, to be stripping people of their rights on that. Um, so I would like to propose that we amend this agreement uh, right now uh, to remove Section 11, and that that would also be removed from any future uh, revisions we might do. Uh, well, um, I think my recommendation, if there is a desire to amend these agreements that are in front of the board today. Um, I would suggest, depending on uh, what Rick and the board thinks, that the cleanest way to do that might be to just reject these and have us get them re-signed and bring them back in a couple of weeks. 
for approval. Um, and the reason I say that is that these agreements are just sort of written in this funny way where they're teed up as if they're gonna be recorded against the property and then they've already been signed. And um, frankly, uh, I'm not sure creating another you know, agreement to be recorded against the property is the cleanest way of dealing with that issue. Are we recording these against the property? I do believe no, they're so. notary. Uh, because there is a, a, a long service line agreement and an easement involved, I do believe we are. Okay. Well. All right. Um, any member, other uh, board members who have a comment here? Okay. Uh, seeing none, hearing none, I'll go to the attendees. Uh, Tina. Hi, um, my question is for Gina. It's like, my understanding is there's several of these agreements that are very similar already in place. Is that correct? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. I don't know what happened to Gina, but I can answer that for you. Yes, we have many of these out over the years in the distribution system. So I guess my question is um, to Mr. Fultz, uh, why would you want to make, I mean, that this already exists. This has been going on for many years. I, I, I don't understand why you would want to object to just simply passing it and going forward with um, the existing agreements as they are. I'll respond to that uh, when it comes uh, back to the well, board. Um, uh, so that, yeah, that's my question is it just seems like a pretty straightforward thing to do and, um, you know, to go forward with, with uh, the agreements as they've been, you know, before. And I, I understand you have some concerns, but this, this should be a very straightforward matter in my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll go back to the board later on, uh, but right now, are, is that all you wanted to say, Tina? Uh, yes, Lois, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tina. How about any other member of the public? Any of you have something you want to say? I do not see any. So I'm going to go back to the board and Director Fultz. I think you're muted. Click the wrong button. Um, yeah, Tina, it's a fair question. And since you're gonna be joining the board in a couple of days, um, I think it's worthwhile to, to have a, a brief um, conversation about that. And we may have it again uh, in the future. Um, you know, I recognize the importance of continuity and um, doing things uh, in the same fashion. But there are times when what is being done isn't necessarily the right thing to do. And before I was sitting on the board, I really had no ability to um, try to, to work to correct this and to do what I think is, is not right. It's the same thing that happened with the county. Uh, you weren't probably here in the county at the time, but the, the county basically made a condition of getting a building permit, granting them an easement. And, you know, that's just not right. Um, and eventually enough people saw that as not right. It started with just a couple people complaining about it, but eventually enough people saw that was not right. The county stopped doing that because I think ultimately they recognized it was not a great look for the county. And I think the same thing here with limiting, in fact, prohibiting uh, a member of our community, one of our neighbors, from participating in a process that's going to directly affect them um, is just not a good look for the district. And I don't think it's right and fair. Whether or not we take action on that today or not is, is one question. But I think the concept of board members discussing things like this at a policy level, um, the policy being maximum participation of our community in matters affecting them directly not to mention affecting the district, I think is a worthwhile policy discussion to have. And I would be very disappointed 
if we were to not have that kind of conversation simply because we're in the mode of, well, it's been done that way for many, many years, so why change anything? Um, you know, change is sometimes difficult, but change is required in order to continue making our district the best that it can be, the most responsive to our community that it can be, uh, and presenting the best possible look we can while still protecting the essential um, interests of the district. And the district is in no way going to be affected by striking section 11 from that. Someone participating in that um, and participating in a, in a valid way, uh, in a straightforward way, not behind the scenes, to me, is the essence of what democracy is all about. And you, you, don't, you shouldn't have to give up your right to do that just to get water service from, from our district. It just, it's not a good, it, it just doesn't feel right. So anyway, we'll continue the conversation, I'm sure, uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rogers, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, no, I, I, I will say, though, just as a comment that this agreement is probably three, uh, three or four managers ago and, th and three or four legal counsels. The, the agreement has been around for a while and, and maybe just a fresh look in general um, of that agreement, I think is probably a good idea on any and all of our agreements. Um, but this, you know, this agreement has been around for probably 25, 30 years or better. Uh, and it's been punched up and piecemealed, you know, as time goes on by, by different managers. Uh, so it probably would not hurt to, you know, review the, have legal counsel review the entire agreement, um, just like we would do with, you know, just about every time a new, an agreement comes up, we do review that. I don't know, Gina, do you I, have any, I, any thoughts on that? Uh, I, I would like to say something too. Uh, I, I'm all for looking at this but I'm certainly not for changing it tonight. I, I don't think we can, we know enough to make a change tonight. So it's going to have to go to Gina and, and be talked about again, as far as I'm concerned. So Bob, you wanted to say something? Yes, thank you, uh, and I understand your position, Lois, and and um, and the reasoning behind it. Um, I guess my question for those that think this shouldn't be changed is why would you be comfortable with stripping your neighbor of uh, their ability to participate in a community uh, topic like extension of water lines? Um, I think that's the essence of at least around Section 11. Um, I think it's a question that we should all wrestle with with our consciences, uh, perhaps not tonight. Okay, do any of the other board members have something to say? Okay. Um, so I'm assuming we're gonna move on to the next item, which is virtually the same kind of a thing. We do need a vote. The board going, is the board going to approve this agreement? I think we need to vote on the motion uh, to approve the uh, long service plan agreement or not to one or the other. Oh, well, okay. So I need direction. If we're not going to approve it tonight, then I yeah, need direction. Okay. Uh, I, I just thought we weren't doing it tonight. So, okay. Um, is, well, is there a motion to approve or disapprove this tonight? And just for clarification, there's two resolutions um, in the packet, uh, resolution number eight, 2021 and nine, 2021, that if right. approved would effectively approve the agreements. Yeah, yeah, there's motions. But I, I don't see anybody agreeing to anything at the moment. Uh, so what to do? So if we can't if we can't get a motion to uh, 
to attempt to approve the resolution, then I would take this back. You know, the Markleys have been working on this for quite some time. Um, I don't want them to think that the district is not going to work with them on, on supplying water. Um, if it was just removing section, was it 11, Bob? Yeah, I mean, I think there's still the question about term and all that, but but my number one objective would be to eliminate section 11. Gina, do you have any comments what would be the best way to do that? Um, well, you could just strike out section 11 and have, well, if, if the re it's designed to be recorded and recording offices sometimes don't like that kind of thing. Um, Right. right. I, uh, you know, the, the easy, I guess the simple way to do it, but less clean would be to just eliminate that provision and then take it back, you know, have both parties re-sign it and bring it back to the board. Um, I think that begs the question whether it's worth cleaning up a few of the other, you know, quick fixes as well in terms of making it clear, you know, what obligations survive, et cetera. Right, um, and we'll, plus the next item, we have four or have three additional long service land agreements coming on uh, item B. Right. B. Uh, so obviously, I guess if we don't approve 5A, I doubt we'll approve 5B. So we'll take, when we get to that item, we'll take that back as well then. Okay. So you want me to go to B? <laughs> Oh, so is, is that the direction to take it back and just remove that section and then bring it back to the board for approval? Is that what I'm hearing? I'd, I'd like to cl have clear direction. I, I, may I say something? Yes, so. I just wanted to say that um, a lot of these couples have been working for, on this for a long time. And I know that um, they were very anxious. They've come in and signed papers on several different occasions and they were, could they be consulted before you decide to redo everything or? From my perspective, they're gonna get water service. It's just a question as to how unfavorable or neutral the agreement is for them. Have, have they all read the agreement? Yes. So they've already read the agreement and they're fine with it. Okay. That's what you're saying? Yes. <clears throat> so could the rest of the board weigh in here, please? I'll do that. Okay, Rick Moran. So, um, I think I'm, what I'm hearing here is, you know, Bob has some, uh, I think, good suggestions about the wording of this. Um, and if it needs to go back to Gina and Rick to uh, kind of clean that up, uh, it, still, I believe I heard Bob saying there's no intent to prevent these people from getting their uh, water. So nobody's trying to stop them from doing that. And uh, that should be communicated to them. But we want to have the most up-to-date, cleanest, agreed-upon um, agreement that we can get. And that requires a little updating uh, right now. That, that's what I'm hearing, all right? And I, I agree with that. I don't think, I think Rick and Gina said it wouldn't take that long for them to, to clean that up. So, you know, it's that in January, they still have their agreement and they can go ahead and uh, with the county and what they need to do there. That's me. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody think I should go back to the public since we've continued to talk about this? I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to go back to the public. Okay, Beth. Thank you. Um, you, you know, I've, it sounds to me like I've heard uh, Rick Rogers in agreement with the concerns that uh, Director Fultz has and that the intent of the action, as well as, as Gina Nichols, and it seems that the intent of the removal of uh, 11 is to actually benefit the uh, 
the couples who are looking to have, you know, this water line issue contractually resolved, I, I can't imagine that it would be disadvantageous to them. And so it seems to me also in the spirit of, you know, that several uh, operations directors ago or district managers ago and uh, changes in legal language that it only makes sense to make sure that what our legal documents are reflect what we really need them to reflect. <laughs> so I think the Markies would like that yeah. clause removed because what that is the intent of that is where some of these long service lanes are sooner or later the district may go in on an assessment district with many homes and bring water service, bring main lines, fire hydrants by their homes and then hook them up to that. And that clause uh, requires them to pay their fair share of that assessment district. So to the, to the homeowner that has this clause, it would be very beneficial to them not to uh, have that in there and they would not have to pay their fair share of the assessment district. Yeah. Uh, there lies the problem with it. Uh, so, Cynthia, you uh, you have your hand up. Can you hear me now? Yes. So my uh, that was what, one of my questions was that what was the in, original intent of that easement? If it's not so that you can go in and service that line, but rather so that you can charge people an additional fee that makes a difference. Um, I was wondering whether you could handle this in the special meeting this month rather than waiting till January. I'm wondering whether Holly's concern is not passing these, um, approving these contracts this month might be a disadvantage for some of these people. That's all. Thank you. Any other public members? Okay. Uh, Rick, do you want to answer Cynthia's question? Well, I, you know, I think I did. It's, you know, a lot of these long service line agreement services are at the end of water mains. And sometimes sooner or later, like it was when we did the assessment district and extended water service from Riverside Grove out Highway 9 to San Lorenzo Woods, San Lorenzo Park, there was a home at the end of the line that had a long service line agreement um, and was required to pay as part of the assessment district. But I will say they petitioned the board and the board removed them from having to pay from that assessment district. Um, so in you know my time, we've only had one of these come back to the board and you know the board waived it. Thank you. Uh, Director Ferris. Yes, thank you, Lois. A question for Gina and a question for Rick. Gina, as I look at that agreement or those agreements, uh, the homeowners have already signed. So have they not already executed the agreement on their end and are simply waiting for us to execute it on our end? Yes. Okay, then a record a question for you, Rick. Do you believe the expectation from the homeowners is that they're going to get a signed agreement after tonight? Yes. So you believe that they will be um, in discontent if they don't? Disappointed. You know, I, I think Director Fultz's comments that he doesn't like the language and the change of the language is beneficial to the customer. I think they'll understand it. It's just they'll be a little disappointed that, you know, there's the long process of trying to build has a lot of setbacks. And this is just a minor one. I understand the need to change this agreement and I agree with Bob on that regard, but we, since we have hundreds of these agreements out there already, is signing four more really gonna put us in that much of a, of a, a problematic position as opposed to getting these people moving forward on getting their water connected? That's really a question to the board. Okay, uh, thank you, Lou. Um, I, Bob has his hand up again and maybe you'll wanna make a motion at some point, Lou. Uh, Bob? 
Yeah, it, it's a fair question, and it, it's always a question of well, when do you when do you cut off something that isn't isn't great? Um, we had this conversation about a year ago on a long line, um, and you know here we are again. So, you know, I have no expectation that this will actually get addressed if we pass this, because it didn't get addressed last time, unfortunately. And that was probably due to the fact the board didn't give specific direction at the time. Um, I, I, Rick, I, help me out with the assessment district issue. So if someone goes into an assessment district, um, there's a vote of that, right? Of the, of the people that are involved? Correct. And, and isn't that have to be at least a super majority vote? I'll refer to Gina. Well, that, that de depends on exactly what is being done. Um, a majority is sufficient for a lot of things. But, but then everybody that's in the assessment district has to pay for the uh, assessment district, whether they have this clause or not. If it's been right. approved. It, it depends yeah. on how the assessment district written. If it's, uh, some are written if they are receiving direct water service. Just because their parcel, like North Boulder Creek, there was a lot of parcels that weren't part of the assessment district. It was uh, only the parcels we supplied water to. Um, and Felton's the same way. It's only the, the, the assessment is charged per water connection. Well, I, I, I think, so I don't think people should have to pay twice for water connections. The question is whether they're paying for the infrastructure to supply water to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think this is another ambiguity where if I read this document here, it's really not clear what it means by the, the, the one line. It's almost a throwaway line in there. So if there are certain circumstances that we think are different from A to B, we ought to be very clear about that as well. Um, I, you know, I could certainly uh, leave in the last sentence as a compromise and take everything else out. Which, oh, are you on section 11, Bob? Yeah, still, uh, still section 11. Still 11. Basically, okay. this section 11 breaks into two parts. One is a stripping them of their rights to participate in the process and even oppose the process. The second part is their requirement to pay for whatever is happening there. If they're going to pay for it, they at least ought to be able to participate. It, it should be one or the other. If you don't participate, you don't have to pay. If you participate, you, and you should have to pay um, if, if it gets passed. Um, so as a compromise, we could leave the last sentence. And just change the word his to their. Uh, since I think we have a pronoun uh, issue there. Applicants shall execute documents as may be required to contribute their assessed share of the cost of the capital improvements and or procedures. Gina, does that need a new agreement? Well, um, I think it does because I don't think we can just cross it out and record it. Um, we're going to need to have a clean version for everybody to resign um, in order to be able to record it. It, look, it doesn't appear that this is moving forward. I, I'm not sure, it, should we call and have a motion and the motion dies, it goes back to council and the manager and we redo the agreement? Yeah. Move this okay. ahead. Okay. Um, so, because we're not, we're, not, we're not moving this forward and, I, and, and it would be good on that. Uh, Lou Ferris, did you wanna make a, um, well, it's not a motion, it's a, it's a resolution. Lou? I, I actually posed a question because um, I, I could go either way here. And so I, I would rather let somebody else make a motion and then, and then move on. I, I, I could go either way. I could, I, I my, my initial incl inclination is let's just go ahead and sign the agreements because I think the optic from the homeowner is they're not going to understand that we're trying to protect them. They're just going to know that it's going to take more time and more and additional signatures to get what they want. But having said that, you know, we are trying to think of the homeowner. So uh, 
again, I could, I'm on the fence. I could go either way. Okay. So do I have anybody here who wants to make a, a resolution on, so would we do a resolution to reject this? No. We make a no. resolution to approve it and it let it go down. How yeah. is that? I'm doing it. Hmm? That's one way of doing it. Now, let's do you have a recommendation? Or should we just kick it back to staff and we'll bring it back? Uh, I, I think that the cleanest thing to do would be to have a motion to, um, if the board is willing to, to pass a motion like this, to reject the agreements as written and send them back to staff for further review and re-execution. Um, and the reason that I suggest that is because um, you know, anybody who signs a contract with a public agency should be aware that it's got to be properly authorized. And in this case, it's got to be authorized by the board. Um, but it would be good to have a clear record that, you know, even though these agreements are not signed, that they were, uh, you know, they're ineffective because they weren't properly authorized. So we would actually do a motion, not a resolution. Yeah, no resolution, just a motion to, to reject agreements um, and authorize uh, staff to uh, uh, make modifications and re-sign. Okay. So, Lois? Yeah. I'll make that motion okay. to uh, reject this agreement and... It would be great if we could do this for the next one as well, but I understand if we can only do one at a time, all right? To reject this agreement and authorize staff to send this uh, agreement back for modification. Yes, okay. and it could be to all of the uh, long service line agreements in the board packet. To all the long line service agreements in the packet. How about that? I'll second that. Who seconded? Bob. Director Fultz. Okay. All right. Uh, Holly, you need to call the question, please. Sorry, President Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, so, so I, uh, I, I don't believe there's a need to discuss item 5B as this motion no. was to reject that agreement. Is that right. correct, uh, Gina? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. That so was. we can go straight on to 5C? Yeah, the radio tower. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, this next item 5C is a request from the Boulder Creek Recreation District KBZZ, and this is a tongue twister for me, radio lease agreement. Um, it's recommended that the board of directors review this memo and adopt the attached resolution entering into a lease agreement between the Boulder Creek Recreation District KBCZ radio and the district to house radio transmitter and appurtenances at the district Nina radio facility identified as Santa Cruz County APN Assessor's parcel number 090194-16, located at uh, 1080 Rebecca Drive in Boulder Creek. The district maintains a two-way radio facility at our Nina facility located up at 1080 uh, Rebecca Drive in Boulder Creek. Uh, because of its location and elevation, uh, approximately 1,200 uh, feet above sea level, this location provides for excellent radio coverage in the San Lorenzo Valley and a farm. The district has also entered into lease agreements with the County of Santa Cruz Emergency Services, which is fire, radio, and County Public Works, fire, radio, and the sheriff, uh, and public works, and uh, the San Lorenzo Valley Unified School District for the school buses, maintenance communications, and emergency communications uh, between the different schools. Over the past few years, and it's been several years now, um, probably more like four or five, 
The district has been working with the Boulder Creek Recreation uh, and Park District to put together an agreement to place a transmitter on a district parcel to improve the radio station's coverage in the entire San Lorenzo Valley, specifically in the Felton area. The first selected site we looked at was the property uh, that the district owns off Middleton Drive in Boulder Creek, the Huckleberry Tank site. Uh, that's off of Bear Creek Road. As part of the consideration process, the district reached out to the residents of that area and attended a road association meeting explaining the project. The neighborhood responded with concerns of fire danger, increased traffic, a fear of a huge cellular tower being installed. After review, the neighborhood opposed the project and an alternate site at Nina Tanks was evaluated. The Nina radio facility provides uh, an existing building, uh, a radio tower, it's approximately 30 foot tall, not a large tower, uh, standby power, internet drops and fencing. It basically it's a ready-made site. Uh, they could move in tomorrow once approved. Uh, the KBCZ story, uh, which I took right from their website, uh, as in 2012, the FCC license became available for an NCE, non-commercial educational FM license for 90.1 FM covering all of Boulder Creek and surrounding areas. A group of the San Lorenzo Valley community members began to discuss plans to support uh, the recreation district in purchasing the license. The community members had several meetings and were excited to begin broadcasting. On June 6, 2013, the Recreation District Board of Directors voted to move forward with plans to obtain the station. The public voted or voiced strong support for the project and the radio station KBCZ Boulder Creek Community Radio uh, at 90.1 FM was born. Local residents begin to uh, arrive uh, at, the, at the radio station's doorstep wanting to get involved. Now, the radio station is a non-political, non-religious, and is managed by part-time staff, staffers that oversees the fantastic group of dedicated DJs and volunteers and is under the management of the district manager of the recreation, the Boulder Creek Recreation District. The radio station currently has over 30 local DJs producing 100% original shows. Currently, about 90% of the programs are conducted live in the downtown studio, which is, I do believe, located right next to the pizza place in downtown Boulder Creek. Uh, programming currently is focused on music, uh, talk shows, interview shows, uh, with a live uh, evening drive time show that is on Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., and a news roundup Monday through Thursday at 12.30 p.m. The station is looking to work with residents to create talk shows that discuss a range of subjects like cooking, good health, practices, cars, hobbies, and other topics of interest to the community. Programs for children and teens are also being sought as well. Once the COVID crisis is over, they are planning uh, to once again begin training new DJs. After a year of steadily building infrastructure and pre-programming some original shows in a, in a small room above uh, a coffee shop in Boulder Creek. Uh, the radio station then moved to a small room nicknamed the closet at the Boulder Creek Recreational Center. Uh, the station, uh, and, and then once the, I'm gonna kind of fast forward to the, the CZ U uh, fire. Uh, and this again was from their, their st the station's website. The station manager closed down the live studio in downtown Boulder Creek and then be and began broadcasting from her home in Felton using the radio station remote broadcasting equipment. Hundreds of local listeners logged in onto the radio station and tuned in to 90.1 FM for info on how to evacuate the town. When Cal Fire sent the message, Boulder Creek and surrounding communities, including Brookdale, should evacuate now, it seemed unbelievable but the radio station began reporting on it and continued as downtown Boulder Creek was suddenly in danger of being destroyed by the uh, encroaching fire. Although uh, all through the night, residents were leaving Boulder Creek via Highway 9 to Saratoga on Santa, uh, or into Santa Cruz. The radio station stayed on the air with them, reassuring all evacuees that traffic was slow but steadily and not to panic and to exit the San Lorenzo Valley safely as neighbors and friends. And Bruce McPherson likes to point out that that evacuation of the San Lorenzo Valley 
resulted in zero accidents or injuries. Uh, quite proud of that. Uh, the next day, the radio station set up remote broadcasting equipment uh, at the Steel Bonnet Brewery in Scotts Valley and began broadcasting the many live updates, press releases, and additional evacuation notices that were still pouring in. At the end of the, the day two, the city of Scotts Valley was then evacuated. When, when all the San Lorenzo Valley residents and parts of Santa Cruz have been evacuated, radio station staff began an emergency regular broadcast schedule from their evacuated locations, Watsonville, Santa Cruz, and Seaside. The proposed lease agreement provides for a three-year term for the use of the district building, antenna tower, electricity, which is very minimal, uh, and property. Uh, the lease agreement provides for rent of $300 per year to cover the costs associated with the use of district facilities. The lease requires insurance, a termination clauses, and several other conditions. It should be attached in, in your agenda. The district has been inter, uh, interviewed several times uh, and has found uh, this has been a great way to get local interest uh, uh, in regard to the water district and the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency out to the community. Uh, KBCZ has shown to be an asset during emergencies and staff sees great potential in working with the radio station in the future. Staff recommends that the board of directors review this memo and adopt the attached resolution entering into a lease agreement between the Boulder Creek Recreation District, KBCZ radio, and the district to house radio transmitter and appurtenances at the district's MENA radio facility located in Boulder Creek. And with that, I do believe there's several members uh, in our audience from the Boulder Creek Recreational District that may want to address the board or answer some of your questions. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Chair. Okay, uh, one quick question, Gina, uh, if this resolution is passed, it should be number eight, right? Because we didn't do eight and nine. That's With right. That's a good catch. Okay. All right. So, um, what, does the board want me to go to the public and let them speak first before you speak or not? Any, any idea about that? I think that'd be a great idea, ma'am. Okay, Bob thinks it's a great idea. Uh, Rick and Lou, you agree? Nod your head. I'm, I'm nodding my head, yes. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. So I'm gonna go right to the, our public members and okay, Tina, are you part of that, that group, Tina Davey? Um, yes, I am. Okay. Are we okay? Go ahead. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Oh, excellent. Hello, everyone. Uh, good job there, uh, Rick, on your announcing there. We're going to give you a job soon. Um, well, we're very excited to hopefully, uh, you know, enter into this agreement together with the BCRPD, the Boulder Creek uh, Recreation and Parks District, and us, KBCZ Radio. Um, Boulder Creek uh, Recreation and Parks owns the license, and we think it would be a great um, a great thing to have our antenna up at the Nina site. Like Rick was saying, the height is perfect for us. Currently, our antenna is at the rec, and it, our signal bumps into buildings and trees and terrain. So if we get our antenna up on that tower that you have already there, uh, that will help blanket our uh, signal the way our license intends. Um, what else can I tell you about it? There's little or no interference or no RF interference, radio frequency interference up there. And there's something called a, um, where is it here? Uh, the hat, which is the height above average terrain measurement is zero because you already have your, your uh, tower there. And um, the engineering staff from the FCC has reviewed the site for interference and informed us that our engineering study for the uh, tower is fully compliant. Um, uh, the, any radiation that uh, exists coming from our small transmitter uh, would be about the average what a kitchen, kitchen microwave uh, kicks out. 
um, our transmitting wattage would be only 115 watts uh, in comparison, KAZU, for example, is 3,400 watts. KSCO down in Santa Cruz is 10,000 watts. We're 115. So <laughs> pretty nice and small. Um, and, uh, and that's it in a, in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, how about any other Boulder Creek Recreation and Park District KBCZ radio people who would like to speak? Uh, Haley. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, but you got to take okay. your finger out of your mouth. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is good. Um, well, thanks for considering this. We have come to your board a number of years ago. As Rick said, I think this project may have started uh, six to eight years ago originally. Um, as you guys know, these things do take some time and we were actually grateful for some of what has happened in between now and then. Um, our station is growing and expanding and we're, you know, this location as Tina mentioned, is perfect for that expansion. Um, and, you know, as we found with evacuations and any kind of emergency um, information, um, that was, you know, a big portion of what the radio station started off um, introducing, but it also, you know, any community messages or any kind of partnership with your district, I think, in getting out information and all of that is also a great partnership for us. Um, a big goal of ours is to be, you know, not so much rec, rec related, most of what we do with the radio station is community organized through other organizations and nonprofits. And so this would be a great addition um, and kind of something that you guys, you know, are welcome to utilize in ways that helps your district as well. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to moving, you know, moving this along and actually finally getting something up. Like I said, it seems like it's been a, a long time coming, but um, we're excited to see if if we can move it forward. Okay. Thank you. Any, Thank you. Anybody else in the public who would like to comment on that? Radio station, park rec, or just plain old a member of the public? Uh, Cynthia. Will it reach Felton? Will their broadcasting reach Felton? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that, Rick Rogers. Well, it, yeah, that, it was specifically their their goal, and I, I won't speak for them, they're, they're here, but specifically their goal was to get into Felton. And uh, we, and I think they did their testing and it, it, it was very successful. I mean, Tina, do you want to address that? Uh, wrong, wrong Tina Lois. Wrong Tina. Yeah, I know. Tina Davy is talking. You got me now? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, the signal will reach into Felton and also parts of Scotts Valley and Lompico and possibly even down to Paradise Park and uh, quite north of Boulder Creek as well. So it's it's really encompasses the entire San Lorenzo Valley there, which is our dream, really. I mean, we we really want to get the full San Lorenzo Valley. We've been Boulder Creek Community Radio, but we really want to encompass the entire valley. Okay. All right. Uh, any other member of the public who would like to address this issue? No, I see... Uh, I, I don't see anybody. Sorry if I miss you. So I will go to the board right now. Okay. Um, Director Fultz. Yes, thanks. I, I actually wanted to pose a couple of questions to uh, Howie, if I may, um, regarding the, uh, the this process and, and the opportunity. I think it's a fantastic thing for uh, the district and the rec department to partner in this. I, 
Uh, we, we were extensive users of the Rectus group back when my daughter was younger and, and uh, has a special place in all of our hearts. So it'd be really great to be able to get this going. Um, I was curious, how long did it take you to work through the FCC process um, to get approval to be able to, to go up onto the uh, Nina Terrace area? Uh, Maybe that's a question for Tina, Wh whoever can answer it. Yeah, well, I, let's see, I have to go back there. Uh, Haley and Tina both have their hands up, so who wants to talk? Haley? Haley, you're muted. Still muted. Yeah, Haley, you're muted. Okay, maybe I'll go to Tina Davey. Okay, Tina. Yep, that's me. Yeah, so we, it took us about six months um, initially. Uh, we had to go back with a few uh, variations that we had on, on the measurements, uh, but pretty much we're approved now and we're approved for that location. Um, so we actually just heard from them uh, yesterday on on this particular site. So yeah, we're we're ready to roll. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I know sometimes it can take a while to get get through them. I assume that KSLV is no longer available. <laughs> That's right. I love that. We looked for that, but uh, yeah, we can't. And you know, they give you a certain amount of call letters that you can pick and choose from and yeah, I figured that was the case yeah <laughs> but we did uh, look great uh, Rick I had a, a couple of questions for you regarding the um, you know what uh, Bob yep. Tina, Tina Davey has her hand up to oh. answer what you were saying can I go back to her oh I um, she she did already it was six months for mm -hmm. the FCC process no that mm -hmm. was oh okay I thought Haley had her hand back up. No, she doesn't. Okay. All right. So next, next question I had was for, for Rick. Rick, regards the um, initial term and renewal term, sections 2.1 and 2.2, two, um, can you uh, provide a little bit of the context around how we reach these uh, numbers? It looks like the maximum term that we would be entering into an agreement is five years, or excuse me, eight years. And it looks like the district could um, basically modify the agreement at the end of three years in however it wished to. I, I, am I reading that right? I, I, I believe you are. You know, the intent was, and this was, you know, the original agreement was written for Huckleberry Woods where we had a lot of neighborhood concern and, you know, they wanted to be able to you know, if this didn't work out for their neighborhoods with traffic or something in Huckleberry Woods, they wanted a short first uh, uh, a lease agreement to be a short term so we could clean things up. And we pretty much took that same lease and changed things around, you know, removed uh, the building clauses and, and the different things that went with that site. But the, the initial lease was per, uh, purposely designed to be short term just so we could make sure everything was working out. And then at that renewal, we could we were planning on talking about a much longer term lease. But but it is it is your view that at the end of three years, we could modify the agreement in any way we wish, and that the maximum term of this would be eight years. At the end of eight years, they'd need to find a new location. I don't know about find the new location, just renew the lease. And I'll refer to council on that as well. Well, but there's there's no um, there's no sort of successive term renewals here. It's just one renewal. That's that's all that's allowed. Um, and that's at the um, option, of course, of the tenant. Um, it is the intent that it would be successive renewals every five years? 
I think so, yes. That would be our intent. And I, and I would ask counsel if that's the way she reads it, obviously. Yeah. That yeah. Is. yeah, so that's that's not in the agreement. So at the end of the, assuming it um, gets renewed by the, the tenant with the district's consent after three years, it would terminate after at the end of the, the five-year term. So at the end of eight years, unless some sort of an extension gets agreed to. And those kinds of things can, can be common. I mean, if the agreement is working out for both parties, it could be a really short extension that simply you know extends the term of the existing agreement, or it could be an opportunity to renegotiate depending on what the parties want to do. But something would have to be done um, at the end of the eight years. Gina, uh, on the clause that says on terms and conditions approved in writing by the district, does that mean that the district has the ability to unilaterally modify the agreement and present it to the uh, district, uh, to the rec district uh, for the renewal? Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, the, I, I, in my view, those kinds of um, provisions can be really useful in a situation where, you know, there are unknowns in terms of how the lease will play out over time. But you're absolutely right. At the end of three years, the district could, um, you know, hand a new set of terms and conditions to the uh, rec district and ask them to sign that if they want to continue with the lease. Okay, and then on section 11.3, uh, this looks to be a pretty common termination for convenience. Um, if I read this correctly, am, am I right that, that the district could in fact terminate this lease for any or no reason by simply giving six months notice. Yes, that's right. So, boy, you know, given that it took six months for the rec district to work through the FCC engineering on a site that's pretty primo that already has radio on it, um, you know, my concern here is that a lot of these clauses seem to be really designed uh, sort of leaning toward the district in terms of flexibility of being able to change things. And, you know, my concern is that once KBCZ expands its footprint from effectively Boulder Creek to the entire SLV, they're setting market expectations about their service that I'm not sure this agreement is supporting um, because of the nature of the fact that it could be terminated at, at any time at our convenience. And it could be that the terms of the lease are, um, could be changed significantly. Uh, you know, I think we all know that nobody sitting on this board, no one sitting in this management team uh, would ever do such a thing but things change. Uh, new boards come in, they have new policies, uh, new district managers come in and they have a different view towards things. And the thing that I would really like us to be able to move to here with the rec district is more certainty in their ability to operate without having this sort of constant potential threat hanging over them that every two years potentially, or when there's a new district manager, they have to worry about whether or not they're gonna be you know, kicked out and within six months have to try to identify a new location to provide the same coverage. Because again, they've expanded their market focus, uh, negotiate a new lease, execute on a new lease, get permits from the county to build since it probably won't be a, um, uh, a primo site like ours, um, work with the FCC on transferring it, get all those approvals in six months. I, I think at that point they're off the air. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we were, we're putting in place something that's really great. I want to do this so badly. You can't imagine how bad, but I'm concerned that we execute it as is. We're not necessarily doing the rec district uh, any favors when it comes to what they need, which is certainty in their operations down the road. 
Now, the rec district may not care, and I certainly would be interested in, in hearing uh, from them, but um, I care because I want to make sure that we're doing something that doesn't result, un, you know, unintended consequence, uh, you know, four years down the road, we have a new district manager and they go, eh, we're just going to cancel this. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's my comment for right now. Well, I'd like to play devil's advocate here if I could. What if um, somebody controlling the radio uh, decided that they didn't like the district and that they didn't like the direction they were going and they were sending out things to uh, the public and, and criticizing the district and where's our guarantee? Terminate, I, for, ter terminate hmm? for cause. What? You, you would have, if that is a concern, you would have- well, It's not really a major concern, but you but, seem to be worried we're gonna shut them off maybe in two it, years, well, four years. Well, Lois, this is an asymmetrical relationship. Right now we have uh, basically all the authority and power and they, they need us. Uh, and they're a small community organization here. This is the exact kind of partnerships that we need to be doing as a district. If we're concerned about them possibly doing something that would trash uh, our reputation, you can write into contracts things that say there will be no uh, disparagement. Uh, and that can be the basis of termination for cause. But um, that's not in here right now. So it, it doesn't appear that it was a concern. Um, I, I think the asymmetrical relationship we have here is, is what we really need to be focusing on relative to the kind of agreement that we want to uh, execute. Um, because I don't wanna have a situation down the road where through no fault of their own, uh, the radio station is off the air. And I, I, my understanding is if they're off the air for too long, they could lose their license. Well, I'm, I'm not saying they're gonna do something they shouldn't do. I, and, I'm, and I don't think the water district would do that to them. Uh, but you obviously trust them more than you trust the water district. No, I don't trust anybody any more than anything else. This is not a question of trust, Lois. This is a question of contracts are written to deal with when bad things happen. Not that you expect bad things to happen, not that you wanna be untrustworthy or anything like that, but contracts are written for when bad things happen. You know this in your, in your role as CEO at a credit union. You don't write contracts for happy things. And so my concern here is that as it's written, the district could, if somebody came in, has nothing to do with trust, it's written just strict business, black and white, if the district manager uh, decided or the district decided that they didn't want this anymore, they could throw the radio station out with six months notice. And I don't think the radio station could get back on their feet that fast. Now, that's my concern. Maybe it's not a concern. My, and I, I, along with your concern, then I expressed a possible concern that I don't really think they would do. Uh, so, it seems like it needs to get fixed both ways. It could be, it could very well be. When we, when we put this, you know, agreement together, and especially myself, I want, you know, it's an agreement to protect the district. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying, I don't have anything bad to say about Boulder Creek Correct. They do a fantastic job, but you know, that's today and none of us know what's down the road. And I, and we wanted, clauses and we wanted this lease agreement to really protect the district. And that's the way that this was written. You know, I don't, I don't see the district moving ahead and, and, and kicking them out just to kick them out. But I can't tell what's gonna happen 10, 20 years down the road. And I personally, I like as much protection in an agreement to protect the district. Um, not to use it as a, you know, a way to, to terminate, you know, the radio station, so to speak. But I think, Bob, doesn't any business who rents or leases from uh, a property owner uh, pretty much are at, you know, the, at least the term of the lease and so forth, the renewal is, are, it's at the, the property owner is in the driver's seat? 
Um, I can uh, respond to that, Lois, if it's okay. I, and that's, that's just the way we, we looked at it, you know, the, the, to give the district as much protection as possible. So what, so Rick, I, I understand the point you're, you're making. What protections is it that the district needs once the equipment's installed, it goes through its troubleshooting and it's, you know, in a, in a quiet enjoyment state. What are the protections that the district is looking for that it needs termination for convenience as opposed to termination for cause? I, 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 I don't. I, I, I understand your question, but if I knew those answers, we would have those in the agreement. Right. I'm looking for the unknown. To what's something that comes up that we didn't even think about that that we may have to remove all transmitters uh, from that site. I don't know what that would be. You know, that I'm just I'm just speculating, and that's not a good thing to do. But if something says there or some type of incident or something happens that we need to remove all transmitters um, because of RF pollution or something like that. Um, How long have the other two transmitters? Uh, a long time. You know, we've been there for we've been there for probably 25, 30 years. And then the school district and the county came in right after that, you know, and we did the big remodel with the tanks before it was just a, a dirt floor building. Um, and when we redid the uh, the Nina tanks, we put in the block building, the generator, and the proper uh, aluminum tower. We cleaned that facility up considerably. Do, do our agreements with the district and the county have termination for convenience as well? I don't know. I don't know. Then again, those are very old agreements. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing that's a little different here is that we have an agency that doesn't have the resources, obviously, of a school district or a county. Um, and we're, we're essentially deciding here whether or not to get married um, in, in a very fundamental way, because their operation is going to expand significantly with this setup. And that operation can be put in immediate jeopardy through no fault of their own, just because someone decides they want to do something. Again, it's not us. It's not a trustworthy thing. It's how do we make sure that this community resource that really is doing a great job has continuity and certainty about their operation going forward, even beyond eight years. <clears throat> and that's um, that. That for me is um, is something as well. It, it's a little bit different than a commercial lease, where you know I I can always go down the road and find another uh, office space to lease. The, the typically not an issue. Mm -hmm. um, th this is very different. When I go down the road to find a new lease, I don't have to go to the FCC to get permission to do it. Um, you know, I don't have to go through a bureaucracy that may take a year. Uh, you know, for approving something. In the meantime, I don't know what to do. I guess they could always fall back to the um, rec uh, building if 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 they're there as well. So or the um, or, or the uh, country club there. So um, that, that's why I'm trying to understand what the protections are that we're trying to uh, trying to achieve. But the other thing, Bob, is they went ahead and did what they needed to do to get all the things that they wanted to bro broadcast to be able to do it uh, without getting a vote from the district. And they assumed, I would think, that we probably were going to go along with that. And um, I'm sure they've seen this agreement. Um, I, I would like to go back to them and see what they say. If you don't mind. Yeah, no, no. I think that I think that would be great, and and I do know that uh, again, this is another asymmetrical relationship, um, and because uh, we're not, you know, this isn't two equal agencies in size or resources or what have you. So there are things that they um, may be willing to do in, in order to advance their objectives as well. Okay, Tina Davy, would you like to speak? Thank you. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of trust with the water district, you know, we, um, we trust. And, and I understand totally why you would want to put that clause in there to try us out as it were. 
uh, test drive us for three years and make sure that we weren't a bunch of yahoos up there, you know, putting up posters of Frank Sinatra or whoever up there. You know, we just, you know, um, it's, it, there is some trust. And, you know, I hadn't thought about that, Bob. It didn't occur to me um, that we might be getting any kind of short end of the stick because we're so grateful that you guys would even consider working with us on this. And like you said, this is a big market for us. We are super excited at the prospect of being able to reach down in Felton and Paradise Park and Scotts Valley and all these areas. That's that's revenue for us sitting there. And so we definitely see it as we can attract new underwriters, we can attract new DJs, you know, maybe investors to, to expand our little operation. Um, so we'd be willing to, to, I can't speak for Hallie because she's having internet problems at the moment, but, um, but yeah, there's a trust there. We trust you. We love you guys. Um, and, uh, there you have it. And there it is. Thank you. Mm. Oh, here she is. Haley. Uh, where, okay. There we go. I think it's working now. Okay. Okay, great. Um, Bob, I, I do appreciate, um, you know, our board has looked over the agreement a number of times. Um, I think, you know, we came to terms with what was written in part because, you know, Rick had presented this as an option and our board was happy to move forward with it as is. Um, we are also in long-term and short-term leases and agreements that we've looked back on over the years and realized why did we get ourselves in this scenario? So I can, I, um, I'm happy you're looking at it in that way because I, I honestly, as Tina mentioned, didn't think of it like that. I was thinking more along the lines of it being something that we were really happy to start a, a relationship or a marriage, as you said, and that I did have that trust as well that I know, I know what we've done and been successful in. So I, I, I would hope other agencies as yourself would see that as well. Um, you know, I don't think anyone on our, our board would uh, deny the opportunity to extend the lease term. Um, but our, as I mentioned, our board did pass it and um, was happy to move forward as is, but I know that something or an edit of that nature would be welcome, welcomed on our side. So I think, you know, having said that we're, we're comfortable with the term, but I um, I do appreciate the thought and um, definitely the consideration if that's something that is, you know, something you guys wanna look at. Um, we are of course, you know, ready and eager to get the project going, but something like this, if there's an edit to be made, you know, a month or so is not something that is gonna stifle the project <laughs> that much. So I'll give it back to you guys, thank you. Okay, is there any, while I'm at the public, is there any other public members who would like to say something? Seeing none, hearing none, I will go back to the board. Okay, Director Cole. Yeah, I mean, given that we have a termination for convenience, if, if that really wants to stay in there, effectively, this is a six month agreement and so if there's anything that isn't going well, um, you know, the, the district, and, and it was something that was really impeding district operations or in somehow um, affecting Rick, what our, our team needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it's resolvable. You don't have to wait until the end of three years to do that the way this is written. Um, I, I would very much like to see if we could get the initial term to be five years and have successive three-year um, uh, renewals, auto renewals, unless um, uh, the parties uh, decide they want to uh, terminate it. I think that would be, um, I think that would be a way to provide a little bit more uh, certainty uh, around uh, operations for the district, direct district, while still providing 100% of all the protections that. Um, that you're looking to accomplish. Yeah. So I, I guess I don't understand that. So you want to rewrite this to five years, but we're going to leave in the six month thing. So how does that exactly work? Why don't we just approve this? And 
three years or up, you can do it for five years, whatever. But I, why are we dilly dallying around? The, 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 you know, contracts are, um, so the policy around this, Lois, isn't dilly dallying. This is a significant agreement with a fellow agency that it is extremely beneficial for us to have a partnership with and to have a partnership with on a solid relationship that gives them what they need as well, which is, in my opinion, something more than what we have now. If the board chooses to go ahead and pass it as is, that's fine. Um, I certainly can vote for that. Um, but I think having the conversation around how we should be interacting with other agencies in this asymmetrical fashion is, is really important. Um, it's not something you just say, oh, heck, we're not going to worry about it, just as with the last discussion we had. It's, it's an important thing. Uh, it gets to the heart of what our democracy is all about. And they read the, the terms and conditions. They agreed with them. They were, and they just said they agreed with them. Uh, I, I, I don't know where you're coming from. Well, what I'm coming from is wanting to make sure that we're doing things the right way. And yes, I understand that they agreed to them. Um, just as people who wanted building permits 30 years ago agreed to a blanket easement from the Santa Cruz County, because effectively that was what it took to get what they wanted. I understand all of that. But as written, this agreement terminates. There is no extension after eight years, and we can effectively terminate it at any time in six months. Um, I, I just don't think that's the right thing to be doing, but I guess we can move forward on it here tonight. Okay, um, any comments from the rest of the board? Uh, not seeing any. I'll say something Lois. Oh, okay, Rick Moran. Well, I, I think it's a good idea that uh, we'd be uh, helpful to uh, this radio station and uh, we can with very little um, expense or anything on our part. And uh, if, you know, I understand Bob's point and I understand that uh, they, uh, the two people that talked agree with Bob that, you know, there could be a little bit better wording of this. Uh, so, <clears throat> You know, I'm, I'm not prepared to make a motion or anything. I'm just uh, kind of, uh, you know, support us helping this radio station in the best way we can. And I think Bob and uh, these two people that represent the radio station uh, think that, you know, they could uh, edit or tweak this agreement. Then uh, let's do that. What why I don't we do, them say was why don't that, we do this? The whole board, their board, they all read this, they were in agreement with this. That's what I heard them saying. They what they also said was if we wanted to delay and change the wording, then okay. Um, but I don't hear them being concerned about this contract well if we if the if the board was open to it i do think there are some um suggestions i'd like to make around amendments that would still provide the district with the protections that they would need uh in order to do that but i think the if we want to keep the termination for convenience i think we need to give more more notice in order to provide them with the um lead time it's going to take to get to a new site and get through the FCC uh, process. Um, and I'd like to see audit, you know, I'd like to see more than eight years potential here. That is, it can be renewed for more than a, an additional renewal term. It can be renewed for successive renewal terms as well. Um, I, I think those, you know, the, the, the station's already been operating, I think, for what, six years, seven years, or at least this, uh, the license has been uh, in their possession, I think, for that long. So effectively, we're talking about an agreement here that would only double their current life, um, their lifetime. 
I, I just think we should be cautious the first few years until we have service at that facility. You know, we're not looking to terminate the lease or cause hardship. I really want to protect the district, and I, I think there's unknowns going into this. What, what protection, given we have a six month termination for convenience, what protections are you looking for? As much belt and suspenders to, to protect the district as I can, as we can have in an agreement. That's why we have an agreement. And that's why there's so many different clauses is that I like belts and suspenders when we're gonna protect the district. And I don't know what the unknown is, Bob, and I'm not, assuming that there's going to be an issue, but I would like to, before we get into long terms, automatic renewals and so forth, that we have a, a couple, two or three years of operations under our belt. I mean, that's just my opinion. And, and I, I'm concerned about protecting the district. And I, I don't know if council has any concerns. But, but um, Rick, I'm, I'm missing something here. Given we have a blanket termination for convenience with six months, what is the objection to longer terms, successive auto renewal, all the rest of it? I, I don't, I don't get what the concern is. Uh, can we go to Gina, who has her hand? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Gina. Okay, so um, I, I guess I, I really don't have any objection to putting whatever business terms into an agreement like this that that that, that the board wants. Um, as a whole, um, but I do think it's important to think about the function that an agreement like this is performing and kind of how it fits into the market. Um, I did provide the form of this agreement and I don't think there's anything in it that's inconsistent with market terms, um, nor do I think there's anything that's inconsistent with, uh, you know, agreements between public agencies where as here, a public agency is providing uh, facilities essentially at cost to provide a public service to another agency. It's, it's very common in these situations to provide a lot of flexibility to the agency that's um, allowing another agency to use the facilities. There's potentially a lot of unforeseen circumstances that are a little bit hard to put one's fingers on. Um, Six months is one of the longer uh, termination for convenience provisions that I've seen. And this one actually is really longer than six months because even once the agreement terminates, there's additional time related to the removal of the facilities. Um, so, you know, there, there's quite a bit of flexibility there. One of the values of having not an automatic renewal, but having a renewal where one party has to give notice and there's an opportunity to adjust the terms and conditions is that kind of builds in a chance for the parties to take another look at the agreement and see what's working and what isn't and make you know typically with these types of public agency agreements that's not treated in a draconian way i suppose it could be taken advantage of but it forces the parties to take a look at what's working and what's not and tweak the terms and conditions if that's appropriate um, without, you know, just slipping into a situation where agreements renew automatically forever without ever being looked at. So those, those provisions are there for a reason. They are protective of the district, um, that's for sure. And there is, you know, there may be things that the uh, tenant would want if they could have them. and. Um, you know, I don't object to any of the things that, that the board decides to do as a business matter, but um, I guess I just wanted to be clear that those provisions are there for a reason. They are, you know, they were thoughtful um, and they do provide some value to the district where the district is otherwise, you know, providing the site at cost as a public service. Okay. Thank you. Any other board member like to say something? Okay. So I, I want to step in here and uh, make a resolution number eight, 2021, uh, to 
to, uh, could, could you say Boulder Creek Recreation and Park District KBCZ Radio lease agreement? Is, is that a good way to say it or not? Gina? Uh, I'm scrolling to the resolution right now just to read the title off of it. I apologize, I'm not on it right at this moment. Well, yes, that, that looks right. Yes, it was. Okay. So um, is there a second to my re uh, resolution? I'll second that, Lois. Okay, thank you. Uh, Holly, could you call the question, please? President Henry. Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Ferris. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I believe that is uh, it, except for minutes. Um, and anybody? Uh, okay, the consent agenda. Does anyone want to pull anything from the consent agenda? So that is approved then. Nobody wants to pull anything. Okay. Um, then district reports, uh, department status reports, um, engineering. Uh, is Rick Rogers, where are you? I'm here. Uh, you know, we do have the director of operations and we do have a finance manager and our environmental planner to answer any questions on reports uh, that the board may have. We'd be more than happy to entertain. Uh, any board members have a question? Director Fultz. Maybe Rick Moran can tell us, are they digging on California Drive yet? Uh, I wish. <laughs> No, all that's been done there is potholing of utilities and uh, potholing of connection points. When did they start? I'm moving into there to start digging and laying pipe on the 15th or 16th of this month. Okay. Thank you. So any other board member have uh, a question uh, on any of these things? I, I guess I could ask James, uh, hey, when do you think those Long Pico tanks are all going to be up and running? Well, we have the drone tanks up and running. Um, Lewis is getting ready to be set. They're vacuum testing the bottom of the tank tomorrow. Um, we plan on filling those tanks next week. Yeah. And that will begin the uh, sampling process. And so we should have Lewis tank online within the next two weeks. And they just moved into the Caskey site. Both the wood tanks at the Caskey site are gone. We're on temporary storage there now. And they are working on um, ex excavating and dismantling the concrete pads that the tank sat on. And then they'll start doing their test pit holes and getting ready for excavation and construction of that site. So pretty soon they'll be doing the foundations for those? On Caskey? Yeah. Yeah, by the end of the month, they should be into setting ring wall foundations and stuff like that. They have a, Caskey is one of the, is the site with the most, excavation it sits on the side of the hill and so there's a lot still to be determined at that site with test pits okay okay thank you appreciate that so any other board member have questions okay um so we heard from engineering basically or operations i guess i call you operations well that was engineering and i'll do operations too i guess <laughs> anybody have a question to offer from for operations 
Uh, and I do apologize that I haven't got the overtime report in there. I'm a little behind stacked up with paperwork right now. So I will have that to you soon. I, I know you're super busy. I get that. Okay. Um, not seeing any, hearing any questions for department status reports. I guess we'll go down to- uh, Bob has a question. What? Um, are we at finance or are we? Uh, are we... Well, I, I said any of them. I mean, okay. I skipped down to operations, but I didn't say anything about finance. Do you wanna do finance? Sure. I just wanted to get a quick update on uh, uh, the status of our cash uh, situation and um, possible need for a loan, how that how that went this past week. So, is Stephanie here? Is Stephanie available? Yep. I'm yep, I'm here. So we are moving forward with um, talking to more more companies about getting a loan. Rick and I are meeting on Monday to discuss further. Um, essentially, Rick's able to move the district along with the discussions with the different companies. Um, and then once we get further along with the process, the board will will need to be looped in for any actual signing of any agreement. Mm -hmm. But we do have more people that are interested. I have two, two firms now that we're working with, Santa Cruz County Bank and CoBank out of Colorado. Okay, great. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question for Stephanie on finance? No, see him. Okay. Um, anybody have a question for Gina? Legal. Okay. I environmental <laughs> skipped all over the place here. Any questions to? Sorry. Don't see any. Okay, thank you. Um, how about uh, any directors, communications? Uh, Rick Moran. Yes, we're at the, towards the end of the meeting here. I'd like to take, uh, as the last act of my uh, time in the San Lorenzo Valley Water District as a member, I'd like to take some time to thank some people who have made my time on this board so meaningful. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my wife, Chris, for all those walks around our neighborhood as we discuss the issues of the water district. She helped bring clarity to sometimes confusing issues. I'd like to thank my mother, Grace, who encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone. Believe me, serving on this board has been outside of my comfort zone. Uh, I'd like to also like to thank my father, Bob, who showed me the need for community service. I'd like to thank my fellow board members, Lois, Steve, Lou, and Bob, who have been patient with me as we all try to move this district forward. Thank you to Rick Rogers, who encouraged me to ask questions and answered many of those questions. Thank you to all the staff, particularly James, Carly, Gina, Scott, Stephanie, and Holly, who helped me in countless ways. And finally, to all the people in the San Lorenzo Valley who encouraged me to do the work that I did on the Water District. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, thank you, Rick Moran and Lou Ferris for your time on the board. And you will be missed. Uh, but you did good work for us. And I'm sure that everyone would agree with that. And so as you go into the future, whatever you decide to do, good luck. And, and don't forget about us. Don't be a stranger. Show up. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely like to get it. Definitely like to put my gratitude out there to Lou and Rick. You guys have been great board members. Um, you guys have done a great job and really appreciate working with you both. Thank you, James. Okay. So any other board member wanna say anything? 
no pressure room. So it it looks to me like it's adjournment time that we've gone through the agenda. And I I thank everyone for all the public, uh, for staff and for board members who've all part participated tonight. Blew, I can't even talk. Uh, so thank you and see you in a few days. Bye. See you in a few days. Yeah, in a few days.